Hello and welcome to Sim Radio here on the Sisters in Music Network. It's Monday Music Madness and you're tuned in to Mixing It with Nikki Chris. This is Nikki and in case you don't know anything about me, I'm a singer-songwriter from Raleigh, North Carolina. My show celebrates women in the music and entertainment industry, providing an avenue for them to showcase their talent. Our motto, Sisters in Music, Together We Are Stronger. My guest today is a lover of faith, family, and friends who was born to be a part of the music, self-discovery, and healing industry. At the age of 50, she is living her biggest childhood dream of being all the things. A wife, mom, brownie, a.k.a. grandma, a multi-award winning singer, songwriter, and performer, a self-help influencer, and energy healer. She is a natural born leader, businesswoman, and humanitarian who shares her music, story, and modalities in hopes to bless and heal the world. I am so, so very excited to share her with you. She is an absolute joy and brings so much wonderful spirituality to my life, please join me in welcoming the wonderful Amy McAllister. Amy, welcome to Mixin' It. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, beautiful. That was so awesome. And I've always wanted to be on Mixing It with Nikki. Chris, you're the one and only. I'm excited to be here. So honored. Well, I'm excited excited to have you and I'm honored to share you with everyone because you are such an inspiration to so many including myself and we're going to get started we're going to kick things right off music is healing and it is the inspiration behind your songwriting and your music when did you start writing and creating music Well, music has always been a part of my life. I was born with my heart beating to the sound of music. I swear I was singing before I said my first words or I sang my first words anyway. I've always been passionate about music. I got married really young. I was 15 and Chad was 17. So I immediately went into the beauty industry and became a hairdresser. And for 24 years, I built my own salon, built my own clientele, I was busy in building a career and building a family and always into music. It's always been a part of my life, but it wasn't until I was 30 years old that my brother passed away and I found myself so heartbroken and lost for the very first time in my life. A lot of us experience heartbreak early on in life. Getting married young didn't even phase me. I just hadn't been through the struggles of life until I was 30. And it was in my darkest times of losing my brother and many loved ones after that. It seems like when we get hit, there's a ripple effect of things that knock us down to where we all have different things that bring us to our rock bottom. But that is where I refound my passion for music. And that's where I began writing because I began finding the words and the songs and the lyrics to not only help myself in my own healing, but found a passion to help others heal from losing loved ones or losing a job or losing a relationship. I found myself for the first time wanting to help people. I mean, I had, I had helped people like believe in their dreams and reach for their dreams, but I never knew what it was like to be lost and find a new dream. So that's where I found my passion first to bring healing to others and help inspire them to get through the hard times and live God's biggest dream for your life or the universe's biggest dream for your life. Wow. Well, I'm very sorry to hear about the loss of your brother. That is actually something that we have in common. I didn't know that you had a brother that had passed, but I also had one. Uh, brother that I lost when I was younger. I had the opposite effect, though. I stopped doing music, which is interesting. Yes. Yes. I stopped doing music after that for many, many years. 
it wasn't until I had children that I picked it back up again. So it's very interesting how two perhaps unfortunate similar events have different paths for different people. I always wonder how that happens that way. But anyway. When you stop doing music, though, don't you think that was also a crash, like also a a response to losing your brother? It could have been. I mean, I think it was more along the lines of I felt an obligation to fill what people expected of me, mm-hmm. right? So it was more along the lines of instead of following my own dreams, I decided to put my dreams aside and do what I was supposed to do, if you will. Wow. Does that make sense? And okay. And see, that's the opposite for me. I had finally reached the point where I was done putting my dreams aside when my brother passed and, and I didn't even realize it. I didn't even realize that that dream that I'd had since I was a little girl to be like Dolly Parton and be up on the stage singing. I didn't even realize I had put that aside until I got knocked down and did a lot of soul searching and different experiences and coincidences and synchronicities started happening to show me I had forgotten that dream. So it is really similar. And I want to say, I love, uh, thank you for being sorry, but it was also the gift in my life that opened my eyes. I know he's with me always and all of my loved ones are, but it was the gift that started my spiritual path. That's when I started was when I lost my brother. So as much as it was the biggest tragedy, the first biggest tragedy that happened in my life, it was also one of the greatest gifts. Oh, that's a wonderful way to look at it. Wonderful way to look at that. You've achieved multiple awards in your music career. Can you share some of the highlights and memorable moments from your musical journey? Because I'm sure you have (laughs) several that you could share with us. Well, I do have a, a few. They're all most memorable. But the very first one was, it's crazy how we manifest things in our lives. I used to go to Nashville and people would say, you're way too old to be coming into the country music genre. Sorry, you haven't been in the bars, you know, performing. You haven't been, you know, paying your dues. And I said, well, I have paid my dues in other ways in life. And I'm just going to go straight to the big stage because they just would tell me a wife and a mom is just not going to be in the bars here in Nashville and there's not going to be a record label signing you, which I, that's never why I was doing music. But I had somebody contact me, Darlene Fowler, and she said, God has put it on my heart for you to perform at the Grand Old Opry stage, on the Grand Old Opry stage for the Ralph Stanley tribute. So I got to sing his version of this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine on the Grand Old Opry stage. And that was one of my first big performances. And so that was most memorable. And then there was a time when I first started doing music, not very many people believed in my music and in my career change. And they believed I was going through midlife crisis. And there was a time where I really wanted to prove that all that money and all that hard work and all that time I had spent on making music was worth it. And all of a sudden messages started pouring in. We have this fabulous thing called the internet. It's a beautiful gift that we've been given. All these people started messaging me about my song, My Angel, and how much it had touched their lives and the healing they were finding in it because they had lost a loved one. And in that time of all those people being touched and their lives being changed, I let go of my music ever needing any recognition because I knew the purpose behind it was not only for my healing, but for the healing of others. And at that time, there was a little girl who started when she was 14 years old. We all know her, Josie Passantino. I got a message that I had been nominated for my song, My Angel. And that year, it won the very first Josie Award for Inspirational Song of the Year. And I also got to perform at the award show or in Dollywood on the Mm -hmm. celebrity stage. Yes, and that's where I met you. And so many great connections came from that. And it just was a moment where my dream came full circle of wanting to be like Dolly. There I was on the Dollywood stage with a song I'd written for my brother, the very first song I wrote. And by the way, that song came to me 
one day I was taking Macy to dance and I was crying on the way home. I had just dropped her off and that song just came to me. I know it was just given to me from the other side and I just sang it the whole way home. And so on the Dollywood stage, that is where it just, my dream came full circle. And also when I was given the humanitarian award, Catherine Shipley presented that to me. That was another Josie Music Award that just meant a lot to me. And it made me step up into a a higher role in my life and become a better person because I didn't feel worthy for that award. And so that changed the trajectory of my life. One other thing that I have to share that I just loved was I got to sing for veterans in my own community and Pamela Englert, she's the one who asked me to perform. I didn't know that she had given the song to all of the veterans. And when they stood up singing Let Freedom Rock, shaking their booties in their uniforms, that's a a moment I will never forget in my music career as well. I've had so many, like it's, it's so amazing the miracles and the blessings and the opportunities that I've been blessed with. I, I love every one of them. All of those are absolutely wonderful. <laughs> and yes, we met Josie Music Awards in Kitchen Forge, I believe. Yes. Yeah, right? Yes. I think that was yes. the first time that we met. So, and, and we've been musical sisters ever since. One of the things that I absolutely love is the fact that you have ventured into self-help and energy healing, and you actually, they complement your music in various different ways. How did you transition into these fields, and how do you leverage those in your music and your personal journey? You know, it's crazy because that is so true. And I just yesterday told Jesse that that's who I work with, my partner. I work with three days a week, and we do lots of different adventures together. And I told her yesterday, I said, I want to do a self-help workshop for my birthday in January, and I want it to be the Diamond Discovery Presents I'm That Girl. And that's going to be the title track to my new album. And it wasn't going to be the title track. It, it just has evolved into the title track. And I believe the reason they coincide is because I write from my life experiences. And so therefore my writing and my songs coincide with my life and the life path that I have been put on. I have become absolutely 100% addicted to self-discovery and self-growth. I love Tony Robbins. I love seminars. We talk about changing the world all the time, and we think it's about what we do for others. I personally have gotten lost in someone else needing to change. And ever since I learned that you change yourself, you change the world, it has become one of my biggest passions is self-discovery and self-growth and helping share that passion with others. So I believe that's why, because I write about my life experiences and they coincide with what I'm doing in my life. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. I love it when people talk about how they're leveraging two different facets of their life and then bringing them together into Mm -hmm. music and their composition. I love that because it really means that what they're creating has feeling to it, right? One of the things that I struggle with a lot of the music today is that a lot of the the lyrics and a lot of the compositions are very repetitive. Sometimes, in my opinion, I'm like, what are they even trying to communicate here? This doesn't even make any sense. And one of the things that I love about your music in particular is it's very relatable. You can certainly, certainly get from everything that I have listened to, your feeling behind the composition and what you are hoping that listeners can get out of it and It's fantastic because somebody can listen to something and and we're going to play that girl in just a minute, but somebody can listen to a song like I'm that girl 
and be like, wow, you know, I can really relate to this. And I can almost envision what Amy was thinking when she wrote it. So it, it's absolutely wonderful to me. Thank you. That means the thing to me. I, I love that. You're welcome. Let's talk about I'm That Girl. You just said that it's going to be the feature song in the next album. I think it is also the album title, it sounds like. So we know what that a little bit was inspired by. Was it inspired by a particular situation or scenario or, or just something in general? You know, when I first had the idea when I was writing with Corey Lee Barker, I was talking about first impressions and how people have their perception of who we are. And it's no secret. I walk into a room and people are like, okay, who's this? She's obviously way too much. And people's first reaction of me, a lot of times you can read it on people's faces. And I'm sure we all have our own reason we feel that way. But I just wanted to say what you're thinking of me is not who I am. I'm that girl who's always rooting for you. I'm that girl who wants your biggest dreams to come true. I'm that girl that in your darkest moments that you don't believe in who you are, I still do. I'm that girl who, and I feel like we're all that girl in our soul. And then it like took a turn to where I had a few dark weeks after that. And I thought, that girl is the little girl inside of me. I'm that girl always wanting your dreams to come true. I'm that girl when the world turns on you. I'm that girl that's there for you. And I had a brother who was going through a really hard time and he was feeling judged. And I was looking at the lyrics thinking, I'm not here to make judgment. And it was crazy. I just said, you know what? I'm that girl here that's rooting for you. I'm that girl who wants your dreams to come true. I don't have the answers. I'm not any better. I've been through my own things in my life. And please don't feel that way because all I see in you is the beautiful soul that you are and how you're trying so hard to conquer these things in the world. And so that song has taken on three different meanings since it was written. And that's what I think is so amazing about music is somebody can listen to the same song and get a completely different purpose, a different feeling, a different kind of healing from it. And so I think, thanks for asking that question. That was fun. Thank (laughs) you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Well, we're going to put it on for everybody. This is the premiere because it's not even released yet. So you guys are getting the premiere of Amy's new song that's going to be featured on her next album is called I'm That Girl. And this is by the awesome Amy McAllister. Woohoo! I'm not here to make judgment and I'm not saying I'm someone who can fix everything because I don't believe I can I'm not saying I'm better and I don't have it all together but I'm not who you think I am I'm that girl. always praying your dreams will come true Right now 
started chatting today and I absolutely love it. When can we expect the release of this and the release of the album? When can we expect that? And maybe tell us a little about who you're working with. Okay, so this album is going to be released on January 13th on my birthday. There's so many surprises with this album. Justine Blazer is who produced it for me. I went to Nashville and she has produced every song on the album. I have written with Justine and Corey Lee Barker and Lou Mullich is on there. Um, I'm so focused on spread hopes and love. <laughs> I'm remembering who's on the album, but it was produced by Justine Blazer and there's lots of surprises with it. Jesse Southwick, my manager is working with me to make things happen on that album. And I'm so grateful. We're so excited to share that. Well, I can't wait for it to come out. If this particular song is any indication of what the rest of the album is going to sound like, it is going to be spectacular. So uh, I'm really excited. I can't wait for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell us a little bit more about what you do in your downtime. If you even have any, because I do know <laughs> you were quite busy, obviously. We went through quite a few things during the intro on a lot of the stuff that you do. But, you know, what do you do in your downtime? My favorite thing to do in my downtime is spend time with my most amazing husband. I love to spend time with him traveling, doing everything or doing nothing. We love to spend time with our kids and our grandbabies. We love to travel. That's our big thing is we love to take our entire family and travel places. So much fun. I love my friends. I cherish every memory I make with my friends. And I told you I'm big into growth and spirituality. I love delving into the secrets of the universe. I love noticing the signs and the synchronicities and the God winks. I love business. I love music and art. I'm really passionate about cooking. I cook and, and I love to make vision boards. I'm just passionate about life and love and acceptance. I love anytime there's a community activity that I'm invited to. I love to be there. I'm just a yes person who loves life. I love concerts. I love to go to any concert. I love supporting people. I live to give. 
You know, this sounds crazy. The everyday things are so much fun to me. Jesse and I went to get lunch at the grocery store the other day and the checker and the bagger were there. And I said, oh, I should get some Cheetos. And they're those big containers of Cheetos. And I said, oh, no, I won't. And they said, oh, you should get them. They're the very best. And I said, well, I'm going to buy one for each of you. And they said, I don't, I don't know if you can do that. Let's call our manager over. And they called the manager over and the checker said, hey, there's no money being exchanged, but, you know, she wants to buy these for us. And I said, I, I want to do my good deed for the day. And the manager said, you can absolutely do it. And the checker said, you know, this is the best thing that's happened to me in a long, long time. I mean, Nikki, it was two containers of Cheetos. And like Jesse and I left the grocery store on cloud nine, they were so excited. That's like my favorite thing to do on my downtime is just find someone who needs uplifting in a small way. And it just, it just comes natural. That's my favorite thing to do is to give. It does come natural for you. And it's one of the things that I absolutely love about you and that I think everyone can learn from individuals like yourself that it's the little things, it's the small pay it forward, even buying somebody's coffee behind you at Starbucks, or like you said, buying a couple things of Cheetos for somebody at the grocery <laughs> store. It's the small, it, it is, it, it really is the small things. And think about what a wonderful world it would be if we all were a little bit more giving and a little bit more conscious of doing things for other people than the opposite. So I think it's absolutely wonderful that you're that way because you're the light that I see personally. I see you as light in a world full of chaos that a lot of us should be striving to be like. In my opinion, oh. that's just my opinion. That's just, <laughs> just how I feel. So anyway, well, I'm a little bit biased because I do know. Well, you know, <laughs> you know what? I, I love that. And I, I just want to share something because it is something I feel the same way about you. And it is something we can learn. And I believe that so much what our Spread Hopes and Love project is about. My husband and I, Chad, we were around somebody a couple weeks ago and I mentioned, I said, I'm going to pray for him because he's just so miserable. Like everything's negative And, you know, and my husband said the sweetest thing. He said, of course he is, Amy. He hasn't learned the joy in giving yet. And it made me cry, like, because there is so much joy in giving. And I think we believe that we have to have money to give. We have to, and we don't, we can give with a smile. We can give with a compliment. We can write a note and put it on a stranger's car. We can like connect somebody else or give somebody a hand up. Like it's not always about money. And there is so much joy in giving, like so much joy and it just hit me really hard. So I love when you said we can learn to give. Another thing I want to encourage people, I wasn't planning on saying this at all, but some people think people are bragging when they get on social media and they say, I did this today. I know David Passport one day shared something he did for a homeless person and people were saying, you know, you're, you're bragging about what you're doing. And I inboxed him and I said, you are absolutely not bragging and people need to be inspired. People need the leadership. They need the example. So don't, because a couple people, you know, don't stop sharing because there's a few people that think you're doing, you're sharing for the wrong reasons. And I always say the universe and God know what they're doing. We, we don't have the right to say someone's doing something for the wrong reasons. I believe when any time there's good being done, it's for the right reasons. I think you're absolutely correct. And I know that I do see a lot of times when people say, oh, you know, I did this today. I don't understand why people make negative comments when people say, oh, I help this person or so on and so forth. Now, I know there are people that do post those things to get attention. We all know that that doesn't <laughs> happen. It does, right? Nine yeah. times out of 10, it's somebody, you know, just making a statement, you know, I, I felt good about this and I wanted to share 
this with you because it made me feel good. And I think if we all looked at those situations with, wow, you know, this person got this wonderful feeling because they did this little thing, regardless of what it is, and you're absolutely correct, it doesn't necessarily have to be monetary, but they just did this little thing for someone and it made such a huge, huge impact. If we all did that one little thing, think of the positive impact that it would have across the world, right? That, that's how I, I look at those things. But Well, well let, anyway, me, share so one much, thing. let but, me share one thing with you. I'm sorry I'm interrupting, but I remember one of the very first sisters in music that you ever did, you and Natalie together, and you guys talked about just throwing love on somebody's music, throwing love on just a simple gift that says congratulations, and going even further and buying their 69 cent single or their album. And you will never know the ripple effect of how many people that made a difference just from sharing that you, that's something you all do and that you all support other artists because it definitely made me more aware as well in purchasing other artists' music and how important it is. So I want to thank Sisters in Music for being an inspiration on how to spread hope and send love and bless the lives of others in a very, very simple way that doesn't take very much time but has a very huge impact. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you. (laughs) I appreciate it. Natalie appreciates it as well. And that is actually a great tee up for us to take a short break here from a word from one of our partners in podcasting. This is Chatting with Nat. We are going to be right back on Mixing It with Nikki Chris here on the Sim Radio Network. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. And we are back on Mixing It with Nikki Chris on the Sam Radio Network and my awesome guest, Amy McAllister. Yeah. We've mentioned one of the songs that is currently out that you are promoting and we are all promoting, causing this beautiful ripple effect around the world. Spread hope, send love. Please share with us how the song came about, how this movement came about. The movement is called The Power of One Movement. Let's spend some time talking about this song, this project, and how this all started. Well, it started with an event in my hometown, and the the theme for the event was spread hope, send love. And I actually didn't make it to the event, but it was an event held to honor those who we have lost to suicide, but also to hold a safe space for those who struggle with depression or had maybe attempted to take their own life, a safe space where we could send love to heaven, but we could spread hope here to those who struggle. I took it like we're honoring a loved one by living our life to the fullest. And I saw how much it touched my little community. So I went to Brandon, who was the manager of the mall at that time. And I asked him if he cared if I took it to Nashville. And we wrote a song with Corey Lee Barker. And he said, absolutely, Amy, take it. It's all about change in the world. So that's when it was just spread hope, send love. I came home and I was supposed to do a Christmas song in the studio here and John Houston only had time to do my vocals. Well, the producer who was supposed to do my music didn't have it done and I went that day to the studio so upset because I was like, I'm supposed to do a Christmas song. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have this song called Spread Hopes and Love. Can you please, please, please just put down the piano or the guitar, just a rough, rough mix. Let's just put it down. We won't even, you know, spend time on the vocals, we'll just do a rough mix. Well, as he's kind of mixing it down, 
I get on social media and it's World Suicide Awareness Day. And I broke down in tears because even though I have so much faith in life always happening for me, I thought I'd been let down and I wanted to do my Christmas album. And I had lost faith for a minute in life always happening exactly how it should. So I couldn't get home fast enough to do a rough mix of me lip syncing to that song and put it on social media. And Nikki, the messages started pouring in from people who had lost loved ones to suicide. I mean, people even claiming that this saved their life, those who were struggling. And this song was just so powerful the way it touched people. And my passion for suicide awareness and prevention doesn't only come because I've lost so many loved ones to suicide, but also because I've had my own experiences at a time when my life was, I got so low that I attempted to take my own life as well. And I just felt like this song had more of a purpose. So I took it to Nashville and Justine did a brand new mix. And then um, it all started, you know this, it all started becoming spread hopes and love around the world when our favorite Phoenix, Kristen Speller in LA jumped on and she was the first one to jump on spread hopes and love. And since that's when it came around the world, because we thought this is like Michael Jackson's We Are the World. It needs to be spread hope around the world. Justine Blazer came on as another writer, and we wrote the rap part and the different languages. Should we share all of the artists that jumped on one by one after that? And they're all the most amazing, incredible artists and musicians and friends to me. Let's definitely list all the artists that have come together on this amazing project. Okay, I have them here on the album, so I'll read them here. Anne-Marie Priserno, Damian Wilde, Justine Blazer, Catherine Shipley, Kristen Speller, Lisa Coppola, Natalie Jean, Nikki Chris, Ricky Prasad Jr., Say, we have Megan Coleman <laughs> and Eddie Kinzo and Kamal Malak and Tess Schumacher and Jabali Africa. I just love Justo and Joe Sec as well. I said Natalie Jean Wright, Sharu and Lou Mullich. Oh, and Nosher. We have Nosher Modi and Carlton Jones. I hope I got everybody. Tell us about the challenge chip included in every CD and what is the movement behind it? So when I was at a hard time in my life, I had a very good friend of mine give me a challenge coin. And to this day, I still have it. And it is a reminder for me of how much one small act of kindness can change our lives and how much it can bless our lives. So when we were making the physical CD, Jesse and I were talking, and I said, we have got to get a challenge chip to go in with the CD. And what this is, is a challenge chip. On one side, it says, it's like a poker chip. And on one side, it says, spreading hope, sending love, the power of one. And on the other side, it says, the universe loves you most. Remember your reason to stay. And what the movement is behind this is it is, a physical reminder for everyone that gets one to have either to honor a loved one who's passed from suicide or if they struggle themselves to remember their reason to stay. Always remember that they're meant to be here, that they matter, that no matter where they're from, what they've been through, the universe loves them most and they matter. They belong. The power of one, the world needs more of them. So that's what it's about. And it also a reminder of what this movement is about, that people care and there are people who believe in you and people behind you. I absolutely love that. And obviously it's one of the reasons why I accepted your invitation to be on this project is that, you know, we can make a difference in somebody's life and it may even save their lives in ways that we don't even know. And the challenge chip is a wonderful, wonderful idea 
Everyone can see them on Amy's website. We have a Spread Hope and Love website that people can go and look. You can also purchase the CDs from the website. You can obviously purchase the songs from iTunes, stream, listen, all of that fun stuff. But it is very important, and we do encourage the purchase of the CD so that you get those challenge chips, so that you can share those challenge chips with somebody that may be in need, even yourself. Maybe the challenge chip is something that, that you need to hold on to for a specific dark time in your life. And I love the movement. I love the entire project, and I love the whole focus around the power of one. One question that I wanted to ask you, Amy, and I know that we've talked about so many of the things that you do to try to uplift people or spreading cheer, if you will, and goodwill, but let's touch on a little bit more about how you spread hope and send love, because I know that you have done things overseas. I know that you do sometimes go on, like, mission travel where you meet with underprivileged organizations or underprivileged children. Could you share some of those events with our listeners in ways that you have spread hope and send love and also ways that they can spread hope and send love in their own way? Absolutely. This is my favorite because I do champion for everyone I can all day in every way possible. When we had our trip planned to Egypt, I messaged our tour guide and I said, is there any way we can go to an orphanage or to a school? I just, I just want to help children. Like, how can we help children? We absolutely went there. And that is what our hearts were so touched. That's where Chad and I found our greatest work yet. We're helping the kids in Egypt get shade, but not, not only that we are like shade and pencils and clothes. We're, we're helping the children there, but also we're going to take a tour next year. And I want to help the people that go on this tour to Egypt with us, show them ways to give back to the people there, because there were so many ways, not just to the children. But I think one of the biggest ways that we can give back to people is to pray for them, send positive vibes, pray for them, hold space for them, encourage them to live their biggest dreams, encourage them when they're down. One of the biggest things we can do, too, is take the time to listen and and validate how someone is feeling. I love to give my old clothes away. Like anything that I'm not using, I love to give it away to someone. And I always like to think, who would need this? Who would love this? Who would enjoy it? I love to take things to the shelters here and um, donate to women and men who are survivors of domestic violence. I love to volunteer in my community. I love to take something to someone who has just lost a loved one. There's just so many ways we can show acceptance. And another thing that Jesse and I do, we take one day of the days that we work and we find people, just everyday heroes. I have a jewelry line called I Am. And we send jewelry out to people who are doing amazing things or who might need to be lifted up. And so anytime you know somebody that may need to be lifted, please send a message or find our email or messages on Facebook and let us know because we love to just send a package out and brighten somebody's day with a simple bracelet or some earrings or a note. That's one of my favorite things to do. Like I said earlier, connecting others, you know, Natalie helped me and Catherine as well, like get involved with other award shows. Like you need to enter this award show, help somebody with their music, um, help somebody connect with somebody that's going to help them. There's just so many ways, a smile, a compliment, a note. Like I said, letting someone know that their loved one's watching over them. That's a big thing. I love to be somewhere and I know somebody lost their dad and, and I can feel their dad watching over them. A simple like usually I have some kind of trinket too. And it, and it's crazy how when you pray to bless the lives of others, you'll have the perfect way to bless their lives because heaven will make sure of it. So there's just so many oh, ways. Oh, I love that. <laughs> there's so many ways. 
Yes, there are, but I mean, it's important for people to realize, and there was a reason why I asked you that question, because there, it's important for people to realize you don't always need to do something that involves, like, money. A lot of yeah. times people think that, well, I can't help because I don't have money or I need my money to pay my bills or so on and so forth. It's not always about money, right? It's there are true. little things that, that everyone can do. Like you said, a smile, uh, donating old clothing, or even helping a uh, elderly person at the grocery store. Maybe they need Absolutely. help doing their grocery shopping. I mean, it, it's, it's like something as simple as that can go a long way. And yeah. I think if we all started doing something simple once a week, right? Start once a week. Who knows, right? Who knows what the ripple effect could be. So I love that. Anyway, you know, and I have, I have a what, challenge coming up that actually challenges somebody to do one good deed a day. And that would really spread hope and love really wide around the world if we'd all do at least one thing. And it could be something simple as uplift somebody on social media. There's so many people tearing people down on social media. Let's challenge ourselves to uplift and not hold back, but say it, you know, yeah. uplift everywhere we can. That's a good one. All right. Well, we've been talking about the song and the movement, and it's time to share it all with you. Here it is. This is Spread Hope, Send Love Around the World by Amy McAllister and a cast of global renowned artists. Woohoo! <laughs>
little bit biased because obviously I'm involved in the project, but again, uh, <laughs> absolutely fantastic song, fantastic movement. So thrilled to be a part of it and a part of this movement and changing the world with our voices and our hearts. So thank you for including me and for your wonderful vision with this project because it is definitely needed and I can definitely see it making an impact throughout the world. So I, thank I'm you. honored that you're on it, Nikki. Thank you for being a part of it. I'm so honored. And every single artist and musician and agent for social change that's a part of the power of one movement, every single one of us are not only talented artists and musicians, but beautiful people who have a passion for changing and blessing the world. And the messages that are pouring in about this song and movement, I mean, I just get chills and my cute little sister-in-law cried. And she said, I haven't heard a song like this since we are the world and I just love it. And I, I thought of the words, like there comes a time when the lyrics, when you heed a certain call, when the world must come together as one, there are people dying and it's time to lend a hand to life. Like life, to life, the greatest gift of all. The greatest gift of all is our life. And we know that now. I mean, every day we learn it more and more that we just can't take for granted our life. So don't hold back anymore. Like the world needs more of every single one of us. And I just think we should dedicate this to Kristen Speller today. And if we could all just channel our inner Kristen, our inner Phoenix, and live more like Kristen every single day, then we'll really change the world in big ways. I completely <laughs> agree. For those listening, Amy and I have been talking about our friend Kristen Speller, who recently passed away. So the interview is a little tough for the two of us at the moment, because it's pretty raw for us. But this is for Kristen. Before we sign off, is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners? Any other upcoming projects or goals you would like to share with our audience? Maybe where they can find you on social media? What would you like to share with our listeners? You know what I'd like to share is that we have had sponsors who have paid for CDs. So when you buy a CD and challenge chip, you actually get one free. And so we are inspiring the pay it forward movement. When you buy a CD and ship for yourself, you actually get one. You are given one to give away. And we want to inspire more giving. And that's why we're doing that. So you can find that at spread hopes and love around the world.com. You can find our CDs and our challenge chips and also our universe bracelets. I'm on social media, Facebook, on Instagram, and I would love to connect. But most of all, I would just like to tell people that you matter and reiterate how important one person is in the ripple effect of changing the whole world. So don't hide your love and light and it's not always about reaching out. I think in the past, I would reach out in unhealthy ways, just complaining about things in my life or, you know, going over the problems instead of reaching in for the solutions. And so I want to challenge everybody to also don't forget to reach in. It's also important to reach out, but I believe when we reach in, in my experience, that's where I found complete healing and now I can be there for others when they reach out and I can inspire them to also reach in, like find a passion for self-mastery because you are the most beautiful soul on the planet and the universe truly does love you most. I want you to believe that as much as I do. That is an absolutely perfect statement for us to end the interview on. Amy, thank you so so, so much for taking the time to chat with me today. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, all of you, for tuning in to Mix and It. 
On behalf of everyone here at Sin Radio, this is Nikki Chris. And until next time, keep on mixing it.